Hello, this is Mark Tucker again with another video in the series on APL components for viewers of the Dabble Lab channel. In this video, we'll explore the image component. If you want to follow along in APL Ninja, look for the project link in the description. Here we go. Starting off in this APL document here, we have defined a background color, which is this uh, pink color, and also some resources that has the primary color, that same color. And we're using that primary color in an RGBA function to get another color that is 40% uh, transparent uh, based on that color. And that's going to be our overlay color that we're going to put over top of this image. And there's also a uh, shadow color defined, which is a little bit darker, that's going to show up around the edges here. So let's go down and take a look at the main template here. We have our basic uh, container. We've got uh, two text items, uh, sweet tooth and delicious. And in between that, we have the image uh, component. If we go over here to the documentation for the image component, other than the ones, the base uh, properties that every component gets, there's not a lot that you're going to uh, get with the, um, with the image itself. Um, we're gonna, but we're going to look at most of these. A line, uh, border radius, filters. We're going to actually look at this uh, on fail command, overlay color, scale, and source. So that's what we're going to look at. And we get down here. Um, this Naming this component image one is going to be important for a little bit later on. Uh, first thing to look at is the source. Um, the source is set to payload.image URL, so if we go over to our data sources tab, we can see that we have uh, an image URL and a fell image URL defined. Uh, these are two images. And uh, looking closer at this image, it's a 640 by 960 pixel image. Uh, notice that there's some white borders um, on the sides, which are smaller, and then bigger white um, borders on the top and the bottom. Um, and we've got our delicious uh, uh, treats there, right there in the middle. Um, let's go ahead and go back. And uh, first thing to know about the image component is that you have to specify a width and a height. Um, in this case, we're defining that as uh, 500 uh, DP or uh, display independent pixels. Um, so the actual definition, and here we'll turn this on, um, under options, component highlight, if you can see the image component is actually a, a square, but you'll notice that right now the image, because it is a, um, a rectangle that's in portrait mode, it's all fitting inside of there and there's some extra space on the sides and that's going to let the background color show through um, and, and that's all set to, to pink. So um, let's take a look here at um, the first thing we're going to talk about is scale. So right now, the whole uh, image is uh, is fit into the the box, the 500 by 500 box we have, and it's you know scaled down, uh, you know because this this is quite a bit bigger. Uh, 640 is the smallest dimension here compared to the 500 that this that we get on the screen here. So the first property we're going to look at is, is none. And with none, it basically uh, takes the image and just um, centers it and then crops anything that, that falls outside of the border area. Uh, so that's the first one. Fill is going to take that image and scrunch it to fit inside the box. So that's why we've got some um, you know, distortion, these, these uh, you know, Delicious uh, macarons are are, um, are scrunched down, and you can see the, some distortion um, in the image itself. So the next thing that we have to do is we can say, instead of just fill, I want it to do my best fill. So that's, um, in some ways, looks similar to, um, you know, the way that the nun looked. Let's just go back here for comparison. So none was more zoomed in because um, it was just taking the, the, the center out of it. But um, with best fill, it's going to use the, the width that we have um, since it's in portrait mode and match up the width 
uh, to the size of our box and then it's going to crop from the top or the bottom. Uh, something that you get when you have best fill is you have this ability to use a line. So you can say, I know I cut things off and I know right now it's centered, but I want to, I want to make sure that the bottom, the whole bottom gets there. So it's going to uh, scoot up the image so that the whole bottom shows up. Similarly, you can do the top. Um, left and right, and there's various combinations of a line. Left and right really won't work on this because it's in portrait mode. If it was in landscape mode, then you would have some more play in left and right, and top and bottom wouldn't be um, as important. Um, the last option is this best fit. So it says, I want to fit the whole thing in, and I you know, wanted, you know, want you to do the best that you can with that. So that's what, um, what you get with, with the scale. The next property we're going to look at is this border radius. So uh, if you want your you know, pictures to come out uh, squares or rectangles, then you can. Um, uh, you don't need to use border radius. But in this case, since the width and height are 500, I'm setting the border radius to 250. And in this case, when I'm at best fit, then I've, I've got this nice uh, you know, pill-shaped or, or oval um, and if I change this to best fill, then I'm going to get a circle. And, and, and so uh, you get, have some options to play with as far as the, the border goes. Now, if you wanted to have text overlaying on top of the image, uh, what's best is to put an overlay layer on top of it before you put any text on it. Um, and in this case, we just specify the overlay color and we're just using that resource that we defined above. Uh, shadow color. So here we have a nice shadow that we've just added around. Um, you can specify how big of a shadow you want. So if you want it to be you know, smaller or if you want it to be you know, quite a bit bigger, you can play around with that. Um, and you have some options on, you know, do you want it all the way around? Do you want it shifted, um, you know, kind of down on one side. So you've got some options as far as how you want that shadow to appear. So that covers most of the, uh, the properties. What I want to talk a little bit about next is filters. And filters uh, is interesting in the fact that um, the source property uh, is actually, it could be a source, a single source in this case, or sources, which could be an array of image URLs and you're like, well, why would I want to do an array of, uh, of images? And um, think about that, like behind the scenes, there's this images array. And um, on this component, if we set a single image source, then that image gets copied to the image array. Um, if there's multiple images that that you set, then all of those images get set, but the only the, the one on the bottom is the one that actually gets displayed in the component itself. With filters, um, what you're doing is you're acting on the images. And so um, let's, let's uh, do a basic, uh, just a blur uh, filter here, and we'll talk a little bit about what happens. So behind the scenes there is that, um, that images array that has the single image that came from source. But then I apply this filter on it and it's taking the, the, the bottom um, image that's on that behind the scenes image array and it adds a blur to it and adds a new image to the bottom of that image array, which is the image blurred. And so now, um, now you get to see, see it as blurred and you can change the radius of how, how it blurs and, um, and whatnot. So let's add um, a different filter. And so here we've got some noise and we can you know change uh, to see how you know grainy we want it to look. Um, same type of thing. The, behind the scenes the image array has one item in it which came from source. And then we applied the filter, so now it added a second image to the very bottom, which is that image that's been modified by the filter to now be at the bottom. Why that's important is because you could add multiple filters. And the filters are processed in the order in which they appear in this filters array. So first, 
Um, we've got the image array behind the scenes, which is the source uh, URL. We apply the blur to it, so now there's two images. The bottom one has that image that's affected by the blur. Then the noise filters is applied. It picks up that, that blurred image, adds noise to it. Now there's a third image that's at the bottom, and you could just keep adding filters and um, um, onto, on, uh, onto your image and just keep stacking things up. So um, that covers kind of the concept of, of stacking filters. Just wanted to give you a little bit of a flavor. Uh, these are the sim uh, simple, um, the most simple filters that there, there's available. Um, so this one turns it to grayscale um, and you can affect, you know, the amount. So uh, I only want partially, you know, grayscale. And then this last one is uh, saturate. And let's go take a look at this one. So we can, you know, change how, how much uh, saturation happens, uh, you know, one, 200, 300, you know, we can get really crazy here. Um, all right, so those are uh, how filters happen. Uh, there are more filters, you know, we only covered four of them here, um, that are more complex. And that would require you passing multiple images in at the beginning so that then you can apply filters to it. So like blend has lots of different uh, modes to, to blend mode. Um, here's showing about uh, you know, your source and, and you know, destination. This is merging you know, two images together. So you can go through and take a look at some of the different uh, filters that are available and the settings. And, and you'll notice that uh, they have these values like source and destination um, and they're negative numbers. Those are indication that you want to get, you know, the second to last image that's in that behind the scenes image array or the last image. So those, um, that's how those work. <coughs> Excuse me. The last thing that we want to look at is um, this on fail function. So what happens if you're trying to get um, an image and it fails to load? Then uh, one time, um, you get a one time on fail uh, command here and you can do certain things with it. So um, right now I've got these two set uh, value commands um, and they're referencing component ID image one, but I've, I've added an X onto the end. So in essence, now I've disabled it. But first thing that you might want to do is you might want to go ahead and say when the image um, doesn't exist, um, well, here, let's do this first. Um, let's go here into the data and we'll change this uh, and we'll add an X onto the end of this. So now the image doesn't exist. That, that's not a valid URL. Notice what we get. We've got the bounding box, we get the shadow, but we don't get anything that's in it. Um, notice also that the, the 500 by 500 pixels that we have specified for where the image should go is still there taking up space. So, you know, you don't, uh, you may not want this, um, uh, you probably don't. And so that's where you would use on fail. So when that failure situation occurs, you can do a couple things. Uh, one idea I had was that you could replace it with another image. Uh, oh, let's change back the, uh, let's turn the scaling off so we can see it. See, we got a, a nice, sorry, photo not found. Um, how cute. Um, so that's just grabbing this fail image URL that's, that's also in our data source here. Um, so that's one thing that you could do is you could uh, go ahead and just replace it with, a, with, with some other placeholder image, uh, or that could be a vector graphic, or it could, it could be you know, a number of things. The other thing that we wanna look at is that maybe we want to just set the display property to none so that that goes away completely. So if the, you know, if the image exists, ta -da, you get the image with the text above it and below it. Um, if not, then um, it goes away and, um, and, you, and you get the space reclaimed 
Um, like, so the image isn't there. So that, um, that covers the, the image component. So in this episode, we learned um, about the, the basic properties of the image component, about scaling and about filters. In the next video, we'll explore how to use the vector uh, graphic component. I hope you found this video helpful. Please let me know with a like or a share. Thank you for watching.